Uh, hello, everyone. Boa tarde, uh, buenas tardes. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Lili Vieira de Carvalho, and I am the executive director of the Vancouver Latin American Cultural Center of Black. I would suggest that you set your um, view on Zoom to speaker view, just so you, you can uh, enjoy more the images that we are going to, to show. Before, uh, before we begin, uh, I would like to acknowledge that we are hosting this event from the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tisleil-Waututh peoples. I want to encourage all of you to read and understand the history of this land and the people who have taken care of it for thousands of years, and what it means for you to be here. Luiz Aquila, our guest, is joining from Brazil, from Petrópolis in the state of Rio de Janeiro. That's the ancestral land of the Guarani people. If you are joining us from somewhere else, there, there is a fascinating resource that we are going to, to share on the chat so you can learn more uh, about the land where you live. With, on this link, you can find the peoples, the original peoples of the land you are in. Black is a nonprofit organization with the mandate of sharing a deeper understanding of Latin American arts. Our goal is to establish the first cultural center for Latin American uh, arts and cultures here in Vancouver. Please visit our website where, if you haven't done so yet, where you can learn more about our project and about what we do. Uh, Vanessa, who is helping me today, is sharing the, also the link to the website on the, on the chat. By registering for this event, you are added to our newsletter list and you're going to get information from us a couple of times a month with the programs that we that we hold. Today's format is quite simple. Luisa Aquila and I will chat for about 30 minutes and take a virtual tour of his beautiful studio in Petrópolis, which is also his home. Then we will open up the floor to questions from the audience. So as you listen to our conversation, if you have a question that you would like to, to, to ask, please share the, the question on, on the chat, just for the time, for the duration of, of our chat. Uh, uh, when we finish with the virtual tour, uh, feel free to unmute your microphones and raise your hand when you have a question. I will be moderating the conversation to give you all a chance to speak. This event is being recorded for our archives. It, it also was going to be shared on our YouTube channel and you can then share with your friends later on. So feel free to keep your camera off if you're camera shy. I would also want to acknowledge the support of Canadian Heritage, the DC Arts Council, the City of Vancouver and Metro Vancouver to our 2022 programming season. So, full disclosure, I am Brazilian and I have worked with ACLA for um, many years in different capacities, starting in 1985 when he was the director of the School of Visual Arts in Rio and I was his assistant. So, I couldn't be happier to introduce Luiz ACLA, an artist born in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil in 1943. He lived in studio, in studied in Rio, Brasilia, Paris, Paris, Lima, London, and Lisbon. His role as an educator includes being uh, an art professor at the University of Brasilia. His whole role as an educator includes being an art professor uh, at the University of Brasilia and the Centre Center of Creativity in Brasilia, and as a teacher for two decades and the director of the School of Visual Arts in Rio. During this period, Aquila is of great importance in forming young artists, collectively known as the 80s generation. Aquila exhibited his work in the, the 17th, 18th, and 20th Sao Paulo International Biennial and the 27th Venice Biennale. Other major individual shows include all the main uh, museums in, in Brazil, including the Museum of Modern Art in Rio, the Museum of Art in São Paulo, the Museu de Arte de São Paulo, MASP, Passo Imperial, the National Museum of Fine Arts in Rio, besides dozens of uh, individual exhibitions in important museums and galleries in Brazil and abroad from 1963 to 2021. Akla actually has a, a, an exhibition currently uh, at an art gallery in, in Rio. 
Akhil is currently the cultural director of Casa de Petrópolis Instituto de Cultura in Petrópolis, where he lives and works. So welcome, Akhil. Uh, uh, I, I, I prepared a little bit of a presentation because I would like to give you, uh, give our audience a little bit of information, like visual information about your work. So let's go for it. So this is Brasilia, um, uh, the, the cathedral. Akhle lived and worked that we talked about his, his uh, uh, work as a professor at the University of Brasilia. And so the modernist uh, lines and images of, of the modernism in Brazil in the 60s and 70s was very important in his formation. These are some um, images of the University of Brasilia. Akla's uh, father uh, is uh, an important uh, modernist architect, Alcides da Rocha Miranda, who worked with Oscar Niemeyer and Lucio Costa in, the, in many of the buildings uh, in, in Brazil's capital. Here we see uh, some work of um, Roberto Burle Marx, uh -oh. landscape architect. <laughs> And here, some uh, of Akla's influences. Aloysio Carvão and Osvaldo Goldi were Akla's professors. Uh, Vas Vasily Kandinsky is an important um, uh, influence in his work as well. This is a very early uh, uh, work of, of Akla's. And uh, just to show that there is a mix of of the structure of modernism mixed in with nature, uh, which is so, so lush in Brazil and a big influence in his work. Uh, this is a work from the 80s. I'm not going to show many works because we're going to have a, 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 a we'll, we'll be able to experience some of his works uh, straight from the studio. So this is the School of Visual Arts in Rio. Uh, it looks like it's in, in the middle of a, a, an urban park. So it, this is really very central in Rio, although it looks like a, a more of a remote uh, a area, but it's, uh, it's, it's the School of Visual Arts is really key in forming artists in, in Brazil in general. So let's start our conversation. I'm going to stop, uh, stop sharing. My screen. So, Akila, maybe you can turn on your camera now. And uh, let me see if I can do that. Uh, you have to allow. Okay. Hey, hi, Akila. Welcome. Bem-vindo. So we have a group of 30 people here today from everywhere, from Vancouver uh, mainly, but also from other parts of, of the world, from the United States, from Brazil. Uh, you are talking today from Petropolis in, near Rio, right? Yes, yes. And I'm very pleased to have you he here in my home studio <laughs> and people from Vancouver that I love it. I think Vancouver is the most agreeable modern town in the world. <laughs> it's such a good, um, there is such a good conversation between nature and building in Vancouver. And it uh, was a great experience for me to know Vancouver because I know all the others, modern towns, modern cities, and uh, Vancouver is much better and is more human. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, I see relations between Vancouver and Rio because we have the mountains and the water yes. plus a modern city all together. So we are, we, here we are very surrounded by nature as you are in, in Rio and also in Petrópolis. Yes, but Vancouver has a sort of light, light charm. Uh, it's very light, Vancouver. And I love that, that uh, the people are kind and light and uh, it's not, uh, the, people, the people are not stressed all the time. It's not a stressing town. Rio That's is, true, is, I, I is, agree. Rio, Rio is a very stimulating town. 
uh, is one of the most stimulating town in the world, but it's very stressing, it's very overwhelming. And Vancouver is just the contrary. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So one thing that I, I, I wanted to, to talk about, because I experienced that so much when I, we worked together at the, at the Parque Lage in School of Visual Arts, there was this moment in Rio in the 80s where we... Um, uh, where we, uh, okay, just, I was hearing some noise in the background, but uh, the, the, what was called in Brazil the 80s generation, which was this group of artists that, that came out of Parque Lage uh, back then, it was a, a moment of return to painting. So uh, can you talk a little bit about this moment? So what, what, what was happening before and what changed with the 80s generation of artists in Rio? Yes, it's, um, we had 25 years of a very hard dictatorship in Brazil. And uh, during this period, it was very difficult to have a uh, direct conversation, or have to, to, to speak in the underlines, you know, to talk in the underlines. And um, painting is something that's very direct and very emotional. And the emotional during the dictatorship was a very dangerous thing to feel. And uh, when I was taught, taught in Park Lage, I was just in the end of the dictatorship that was much more weak, and the in end of the dictatorship, and come a generation that wants to show what they like and what they feel without, must, without much uh, co concept. Mm -hmm. but more feeling and uh, directness and um, intuition. And, and, and I think working with the elements of visual arts itself, like color, the line, the materials. Yes, yes. Uh, it's what, uh, work in the visual, visual language, not, not because before that, the, uh, the, the, the other generation used to be very conceptual. Not? They have ideas, and they 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 have this the they have supports for their ideas. They did kind much for the result, but important was these ideas that was represented in some way. Yeah, I, I believe I don't I don't remember the year. I think was nineteen eighty four. I have a slide I'm going to share. Just that there is the the opening of the this one. So, so this is the uh, courtyard of the school on the day of the opening of the uh, Como Vai Você Geração 80, which is uh, how are you doing 80s generation in, in, in Rio. And it was a big party, uh, kind of a very, a very um, joyful um, moment. And I think that that is, uh, is a counterpoint to these dark days of dictatorship that, that were happening uh, until then. Yes, and, um, and the School of Visual Arts had this contrast between what was happening inside and the building. The building was built in the 20s of uh, 20th century uh, and uh, was made by a big shipper owner to his wife that was completely in love with a prima donna, Italia prima donna. She was an and Italian the, opera singer, right? Opera singer, yeah, yes, yes. A prima donna. Yeah. And, and uh, he was so in love that he built a palace for her. And uh, finally, for different reasons, the, the building go, went to the state, you know, the, Brazilian state, and now is for the, the School of Visual Arts. And uh, it's a beautiful set. We have this enormous swimming pool, huh? and uh, the, all, the, all the school go round the swimming pool all the time. Yeah, and, and how do you see the, so the, is the school is still a, an important center for arts today, correct? Yes, yeah. very important. Uh, let me see my, my 
So let's talk a little bit about the current moment because fast forward, you are now in, in, in Petrópolis, which is a, a place where you used to, to spend summers in your childhood. And, and you are now the creative director of Casa de Petrópolis, which is this other center. And I, I, it's fun because I, I ended up finding a similar photo uh, for this presentation. Let me put this one here. So this is the uh, an aerial view of the this house, which is now the Casa de Petrópolis Instituto de Cultura, where you are the creative director. And this is just the steps from the studio uh, where you are right now. So can you tell us a little bit about this experience? Uh, how is it to to go, you know, to work from this 1800s? The house is from 1884, and how can you integrate a space like that with the community? And what what difference does it make to have a cultural center? Um, Petrópolis is a town that was built in the end of 19th century, and in a moment that uh, there was a disease in Rio called yellow fever, uh, and the people who and the yellow, you could escape from the yellow fever going up to hills, to the mountains. And the people come to the mountains, it, it start the king, the king built the palace in Petropolis and the people who had means to, to do it, come up to Petropolis and built their, their big houses near the palace. And uh, they had this intention to be near the king. And um, our, Mine and Lily's grand, great grandfather built this house, and uh, he was he was educated in England, and his wife, my great grandmother, was educated in France, and they uh, they were such a <laughs> people from this time with strong European influence, you know? and they built this sort of European dream. That was this mm -hmm. house, and at same times with this contrast with the, the vegetation that was there because of a, a garden designer, a landscape designer called Glazio was a French designer who comes to Brazil and draw, uh, designed many gardens in Brazil, about forty, and the only one that rests completely, that stays completely. With the house of Petrópolis, our garden. And the house is difficult to give a use to, to a house so big and to have 35, or 35 owners. And we <laughs> decided to make us a cultural center. That started the same time, the first time was in, uh, 20 years ago. And now we start again. And it's the work of three cousins mainly the work of three cousins that works every day is there. And we have a sort of more practical cousin who deals with the practical things. And we have our um, president, that is my usual sort of king, queen of the house. <laughs> it's and like the me, he has actual director, yeah. Yes, and me, that I'm the artist. And uh, <laughs> the house is very, uh, loved by the community, by Petropolis. And always the people from Petropolis feel curious about this house. And the Petropolis is very proud of this house because it's one of the few big ha Brazilian houses of 19th century that were preserved because most of, of it was demolished to build high uh, high-rise build, buildings, yeah. yeah high-rise buildings. Yeah, and so this is a, because it's a heritage house, no? so it's a protected house. It's a protected house now. And uh, we have a, a, a lot of visitors. We have about 1,500 visitors, I, I, I must. And uh, with many activities, lots of music, lots of concerts. Um, we have a visual, a visual arts exhibition and a visit, a guided visit to the house. 
I'm gonna. And the house has to have the old curtains and the wallpapers in very good state. I'm gonna show it once more. So. <laughs> and you could have. You can see. It. Idea. Yeah, we can even see some uh, some modern sculpture, the white one there on the right, and I think yeah. on the left. Ah, and there is a, a little yellow one on the yeah. lower, like lower middle there. So you have a, a, a sculpture garden going too. Yeah, so, uh, so I think you always manage to have, besides your work as, as a visual artist in the studio, like working daily on your own work, you, you always needed this, uh, like a, a work where you would, would uh, interact with other people. So working as a teacher or as a, a, you were always engaged in the in the visual arts community in general or in the culture, uh, Brazilian cultural scene. Uh, as um, I'm not going to say as a producer, but you know, definitely engaged in the cultural scene. How do you balance your your personal uh, artistic work with this? other work where you are out in the world uh, 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 contributing to the to the cultural landscape it's not so difficult because painting is so, so, such a lonely activity that you have to have excuses to be with other people mm -hmm. if you it's not uh, we don't uh, don't live more in a romantic times that you could go to a cafe and meet your friends and artists we live in a very different time that to have the the citizen is demanded demanded to do things and as a citizen i like to to work for for the group for the society for the the community and that helps my, my work because it stimulates my work. And uh, I think a painter that stay all the time alone in the studio can become a bit mad, you know? it's a bit uh, um, it's difficult, it's too lonely, you can be angst. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. I think we rather do something for the others. You know? Then yes, I, 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 I'm going to ask Vanessa, can you please Google Casa de Petrópolis Instituto de Cultura and share that link on the chat? Because people are wanting to also see images from the interior of the house. And I mm -hmm. think that's definitely worth seeing. The house is really preserved in terms of, there are uh, mural paintings and, and beautiful curtains and wallpaper and all, all that very uh, uh, wooden paneled rooms and, uh, and all that. So it's a, it's a very visually rich space. And I believe that we can, uh, we can show some of those photos too. Thank you. Thank you. And there is somebody's mom's in the chat who is 96 today. So congratulations to your mom. Thank you for sharing your time with us. <laughs> Thank you so much. My, my mom is in Brazil, there in Petrópolis, and she's 94. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, it's Wendy, right? Uh, Wendy's mom. <laughs> So uh, I think that now uh, we we uh, we are ready to to see your space. So if if you can show us around, yes, I'm going to talk a bit about my space sure. because sure. I, do, uh, I like to work at home, and I like the noise of the home, the everyday noise. I love the smell of a coffee being made, and uh, I love the the, the uh, noises of people making lunch. And, uh, and smells that come from the kitchen. And uh, I, I love to be part of the household, not an isolated man, no, isolated wolf. And, uh, but sometimes I like to be lonely in the studio. I like to be lonely very well with company nearby alone but not lonely no yes yeah yes you still and, have uh, the movement of the house happening around you yes and i i can have space and concentration now where 
Uh, and Lilia, is, uh, uh, Lilia Atlas, the sister, is going to help us with this part of the, the visit from, from a second camera. So she's just getting, getting set. But you guys will see that uh, Atlas studio is actually uh, in his living room, pretty much like the, in the very center of the house. The living room, living room is set in my studio. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Lilia, we are getting some. Ah, okay, I think we are fine now because we are getting some sound from the the laptop, but it's fine. You you have to allow us to open our camera. Oh, it's not <laughs> showing anything to me here, Lilia. Okay, we have you. There we go. There you go. Okay, welcome. And I have a big painting here. And that was the one behind you. Yes. And another one from last year. Gorgeous. And a print, a serigraphy that is about 20 years old, it's a part of a series. Okay. I like to have visual things to, to stimulate me, like books and Brazilian folk art. That is a mask from the artists of from the northeast. Yeah, we can see all the masks there on the left, on the, the, the wall by your your front door. The other mask. Oh yes. Yeah, there's and there is a print there too. It's the same author. So that's the main door, the entrance door. And, uh, Oh, it's already getting dark out there. I hope the Wi-Fi will work out there. <laughs> oh, that's that's one of your works too. Yes. And yet another one. Oh, that's beautiful. So that's what people see when they come in into your house. Yeah. That's way. See some 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 works by by folk art, Brazilian folk arts. Those are made of wood, right? Yes, made of wood. So that's the living room. Yes. Yeah. That's my father's self-portrait. So that's the one I was commenting earlier, uh, Alcides da Rocha Miranda, who is an architect and, uh, and worked in the project of Brasilia. And another walk over the fireplace. It's nice to see all the little objects. I love the, the folk art there. <laughs> it really goes with the painting, doesn't it? Yeah, I call, I call this couple, the collector's couple, couple, because they look at those photographs that you see in American art magazines, the collectors. <laughs> oh yeah, the collectors like see. sitting on, yeah, the, the collector couple. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, there is a snake coming down your stairs. <laughs> oh, yes. 
<laughs> it's 5.30 in, in Petropolis. Now it's 5.30 or 6.30? 6.30. 6.30, so it's already getting, getting dark. I wish you can see it. That's a beautiful park. And the Casa de Petrópolis is just down the street from you. Yes. And so this is your corner with your materials. Thanks, Lilia. You're welcome. <laughs> Pretty organized. I don't know if you cleaned up for us, but it's a pretty organized studio. <laughs> it's beautiful how the studio is on the, the same level as the, the trees. So you have nature all around you. Yes. And this is a work in progress. No, oh, beautiful. That's going really well. It's good to have your works around and all this visual information for sure, while you work. Yes, I like it. <laughs> Thank you. And can I show you something? Yes, please. Oh, wow. I had, so that's a, a glass ceiling for, for the, the room uh, above. And that's uh, the, story, the painting storage, right? Like, so there are paintings over there. Yes. <laughs> I don't know who they have a technica. How can we say that in English? I don't know if they, yeah. But anyway, it's like, um, uh, it's like the inventorium, I think, yeah, they would say. <laughs> <laughs> the inventory. <laughs> that walk over the, the over Hackler's head there, the, there is yet another one that, that I don't think we saw. Oh, yes. Yeah. This is five years. Well, and, and those are probably uh, Portuguese styles uh, down below. They are Portuguese styles. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm going to open for for questions why we are uh, why you're at that. So uh, I still have a couple of questions for Hakla, but I, I would love to hear from you. If any of you have questions, uh, that, that make sure you can unmute. You can. Um, right on the chat. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's meta. <laughs> uh, uh, which one should I, I kill Lilia? Should uh, the one with your name, right? Lilian. Okay, so now we so have Akla again. again. Yes. <laughs> okay, myself now. So thank you, thank you for this beautiful tour of, of your space. It's just. Well, it's just a pleasure to have you here. <laughs> All of you here. <laughs> Everybody's being. Um, so I do have a couple more questions prepared if we don't have any questions on the on the chat. So one thing that I think would be um, interesting to talk about uh, because we are a Latin American cultural center and we talk about Brazil in the context of 
of Latin America. Would you say that you consider yourself a Brazilian artist? Does that, that uh, how does the fact that you, because we all, that's a conversation that we have had in other studio visits with Latin American artists, because this is the first time that we are talking to an artist in their own country. But when usually we talk to artists who are immigrants, like Mexican artists who lives in Vancouver or, um, or from some other country. But, and so we have this conversation, okay, you are uh, an immigrant Mexican uh, painting in, or, you know, doing our visual work in, in Vancouver. How, how, uh, how can we consider you a Latin American artist or not? And what makes that, uh, what's the, 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 the it, 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 does it matter? Or, you know, what's the importance of, of creating this label? Uh, so the question is, do you consider yourself a Brazilian artist? Yes, I consider myself a Brazilian artist. And uh, Latin America was a discovery for me because we are apart, separate. You know, we have the Andes, we have the forest, and we have a different languages of our, our, of our neighbors. You know? And when you discover that you are Latin American, uh, it's a fant fantastic feeling because I went to first to Argentina, to Buenos Aires, and, and I, I went to Peru to exhibit and give a, a course in Lima. And I went to Chile. And this feeling that we are very like, we are ve very much like, we are not, there's such a quantity of things in common between us. You know, at the same time, you, you are, we are different. And each, each country produces different people, very likely, <laughs> and, and with lots of affinities. And there's a, there's a very good feeling when you know that. And uh, because of that, I'm very fan of black. <laughs> thank you thank you so much yeah we, we uh, th i think that that is a conversation that we always have at black is is that with what is because we are bunched together as a as a region and 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 it's pretty much you know every everything below the rio grande is considered uh, latin america although we we do have some uh, key differences between countries, even in, in visual arts, but it does feel that we have something that that ties together as, as yes, so. Latin Americans. So that is a, a, a feeling that you that you have as well. Yes, a feeling that I, is a feeling that I like, that I enjoy very much. It's to to know that you know, you're not alone. In the in the in South America, no? because you are so big and so isolated, and when you discover that you have such a good, uh, brilliant neighbors, is a, and you are part of that that neighborhood. Yes, Latin America is a neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, That's a great way to put it. <laughs> yes, and 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 such interesting neighbors. That's great to know that. See if you go to the charming European Buenos Aires and nostalgic Buenos Aires. And you go to Lima, full of old culture and tradition. And you go to Buenos Aires, this solid city, uh, to Santiago, the solid mm -hmm. city of Santiago, and to Atacama, this wild desert. Uh, it's fantastic. And... Uh, each country has their, their star, the their light, their, prop, their own lights. Yeah, we have a couple of comments. Uh, uh, um, Lisa was talking about, uh, asking about how the environment impacts your painting. And we talked a little bit about that, but you're also, uh, you know, how you're, uh, you work from, with all this visual information around you, but we can tie that. So that the question was, how much does your environment impact your painting, nature, or place? But in Olga is saying, it is interesting that even in the same country, 
regional artists also play a, a, a great part. It's true in Brazil, Brazil is such a large uh, country that there are regional uh, differences as well. Is that something, can, can you uh, notice differences in, in the visual arts in Brazil uh, per region? Yes, we can, we can notice that more for about, about uh, folk art, sort of popular art from, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, what is more. called folk art now? Folk because art, that's, yes. Yeah. And uh, by the art uh, that you exhibit in museums and art galleries, you don't see much difference between parts of Brazil. It's very co cosmopolitan. Uh, art, art, visual arts or fine arts. Fine arts is very co cosmopoli cosmopolitan, cosmopolitan in Brazil. And uh, we can, you don't see such difference, regional difference. You see uh, individual, individual difference, individual of each artist. And, uh, but uh, yes, we have, what you have that's very strong in Brazil is music. And that you have difference from different more regions. More different, more regional differences in music. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, because music, music is something that has all the folk origins and they make another thing, you know, more uh, sophisticated things from fo folk influence. And the music has, can be more regional than yeah. visual arts. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that the uh, Brazilian artist is very, um, it's, and I think Latin American in general, arts are, are starting to get a little bit more recognition in the international um, scene. Uh, I, just a few years ago, we had, uh, uh, at the same time, at the Museum of, of Modern Art in, in, in New York, there was a big exhibition of Tarsila do Amaral at the same time uh, as um, Tania Bruguera, the Cuban artist, uh, with also an, uh, like a, a, a one woman show. And to uh, how, you know, that's, that's new, I think, because it's not something that you would see in the past, like a big international museum having two Latin American artists being displayed uh, at the same time. And I think that there is a little bit like, it's, it's almost like a rediscover of, of, of Latin American arts. And this, uh, you, you, you said, um, use the word cosmopolitan for Brazilian artists. And I agree, there is a, a, a link of Brazilian arts to, to the art of, of, of the world in general. It's very in tune with everything that happens. Uh, uh, outside Brazil as well. But I think there is a difference uh, between uh, Brazilian art and some of our neighbors, uh, Spanophones, <laughs> the people who speak Spanish. Spanish speakers, yeah, I don't know how to. Uh, Spanish speakers. <laughs> uh, I, I like to say Spanophones. <laughs> <laughs> Spanish speakers, uh, because sometimes you can see art from Cuba or from other Spanish speaking Latin American countries that have a very earth influence, sort of mother earth influence or religion influence. In, in Cuban art, even international exhibitions, you can see art with a very uh, strong religion, Christian influence, no? Uh, and in Brazil, we don't have our art is made maybe much more materialistic. No? <laughs> it deals with, with uh, surface space, the physicality of the work, and it's not uh, so spiritually uh, Yeah, oriented. that's so interesting to me. It's true, it's not so spiritual. Well, yes. we see that in Mexican art very much yes. as well. Yes. Yeah, Olga is commenting about uh, folk art from Salvador, uh, Bahia, from Bahia in, in general. It's fantastic. And very strong. Another comment from Wendy saying, I have never been to Brazil, but my sister-in-law is from Montevideo. 
So I have been there and to BA. Her dad was with the World Bank and spent a lot of time all over Brazil. My niece, her daughter learned Portuguese. I hope to visit the school one day. Thank you for this lovely cozy discussion and intro to Luiz. So I, I, I would definitely say that whoever visits uh, Rio, the School of Visual Arts actually has a bistro and it's a, it's a great <laughs> place to visit. It's definitely, mm -hmm. definitely mm -hmm. a, 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 a place to go. And it's near the Botanical Garden. That's yeah, fantastic. it's almost like next door to the to Rio Botanical Gardens. And just, and and just below the, 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 the Redentor, the Christ the Redeemer. Yeah. So you can see and the, the Christ Beach, just, right now, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a great area of, of the city. It's still open for questions if, any, if anyone would like to, to, to ask anything. So one more question for me would be about, you know, you went through the dictatorship years and, and, and now Brazil is under um, uh, extreme right uh, government. And do you think that the artists have a, a role to play in the political scene? I think the artists are, are citizens. No? They, they, they participate and they, they give their opinion. They, make manifestations and uh, and we're having a hard time you know, because all the uh, political uh, cultural policy of federal government in Brazil is restricted restricted now by the government and uh, uh, our president hates culture and uh, he hates all the things that makes the people think. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wants to have people uh, ignorant and uh, that obeys him. Yeah, so I, um, because I, I think that we see, we saw some manifestations or demonstrations from artists, but uh, mainly in, in, uh, filmmaking, and so there was a big demonstration during the Cannes Festival uh, uh, against that, and also uh, there was a, um, a we, and we see like Caetano Veloso, I think that the musicians are very outspoken uh, in Brazil regarding to, uh, and, and have, filmmaking oh, too, because it's so, uh, cinema is so affected by, because it's, uh, it depends on funding, and so if you cut funding, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, it's just the perfect way yes. of of uh, uh, of censorship. You can censor by just cutting funds. Yes, but the musicians have much more space and opportunities to give their opinions than the other artists, you know, because they are always in the um, in the media. And uh, yes, they have that space. Uh, another simple question would be: How is the how is your working day? How how do you how do you approach uh, the, the 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 blank uh, canvas? The blank canvas is a problem because a blank canvas is not blank; it's full of ideas. It's full sometimes of prejudice, old ideas, and first you have to make the canvas empty to start to paint. And uh, my idea is to always leave some, some painting for the other day to avoid the blank canvas. No? And uh, you have always a work in progress. And uh, that makes much easier for me to, to have a sort of uh, a dev dev development of my work uh, painting by painting, and uh, and with a, a, a connection between one to the other, then to stop completely to to have this blank canvas. And um, sometimes it's impossible. Sometimes you have things that make you stop to paint or stop, and you have to to see the blank canvas, uh, blank canvas again 
you have to, to, to deal with that. So the way to avoid it is to be in constant yes. movement well, or instant Yes, movement. it's always a way to find the painting. What I want to do is to find my painting. You know? And this is something that I'm going to, to spend all my life looking for my painting. And uh, find and I try to find my painting painting uh, in a practical way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you you have the uh, fear that uh, the painting can escape from you. That is the awful fear that a painter can can have. It's, it's worse than the blank canvas. Is to, to the fear of that the that that the painting won't be like available to you that it won't yes, come to you gone away yeah has that ever happened the few oh, yes happened many times <laughs> <Yeah, okay. laughs> wendy has a question for you wendy you can unmute yourself yeah. so when you're painting do you uh paint over a lot of thing a lot of the painting until you get to what you want or do you kind of put it down once or I'm just wondering how you work. Yes, I paint very in a very direct way. And uh, I don't paint to repaint. I don't paint very layers, many layers. I just one layer. Only, only when uh, I found a, a sort of a, a assassin paint, painting. That like a murderer painting. <laughs> eh? Like a murderer, like an a murderer assassin painting. painting. That wants to kill me. I paint. I make lots of layers, trying to find a way of that. Uh, another question is what uh, from Constanza? What would you say to people that say art is not essential? I don't say nothing. I don't. I don't talk with that sort of people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't That's know perfect. that sort of people. All the, yeah. the people who I know are very interesting and ask good questions. <laughs> uh, Wendy still has a question or your hand is up just, just because... It, oh, it I, I, I forgot to take it down, but yeah. thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you all. We are, we are getting uh, to the to the end of our time together. I still have time for a question if somebody has one. Um, otherwise, so, obrigada, Akela. Thank you so much for, for this exciting oh, chat. Thank you. For, thank you to have. For sharing this time with with us, for opening your house to us and, and letting us uh, browse around. So the the uh, Olga is asking, do you specialize in modern art or do you do other genres? I do my own work, my 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 own work. I do my own work. I not I don't work with the styles. Yeah, it's, and Christina is asking, do you have a favorite thing to work in your art? What inspires you most? My theme is painting. <laughs> my, my, uh, my, my, uh, the painting is the, como é forma de conteúdo? Is the, the, the subject, and, the, and it's the content, and it's it, both the form and the content. And um, what else? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. So when just saying the painting directs you, yeah. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Because you are an abstract painter, and so there isn't like a formal theme or a subject in the sense of a of yes. a concept. So I, I would like to ask you all a favor. Uh, if you can take two minutes to answer a, a survey, Vanessa is going to share the, the link she has already. Please click on that and because we really want to tweak our, our uh, events to make sure that you know, they fit your, your needs. Like, oh, I would like to know how you learn about uh, this event and also a, 
how you know if this time of the day is a good time is one of the things that we are tweaking usually our studio visits are at the end of the day and we are doing this lunchtime thing so we'd like to know if, how, how you like that so the video recording of this event will be available on vlack's youtube channel in a few days uh i'm also uh sharing the the link to the youtube channel and on the youtube channel you can see past studio visits and other programs this coming week uh, on Tuesday, we are, we are going to have a reading group. Now, our reading group, it's a Latin American short stories reading group that we're doing in partnership with the University of British Columbia. It's really fun. I, I recommend that you all come if, if you can. We read short stories from Latin America in English, in the translations to English. The conversations are also in English, but moderated by just fantastic professors. Uh, so I recommend you all to come. That was on the 11th. It's also a free program. The, the link for that is on, on the chat. If you would like to keep events like this available to all, so please consider donating to VLAC. This was a free event, and, but we do depend on donations. So if you can donate whatever amount helps. So thank you again, Akila. Uh, I, I really uh, uh, hope uh, to see you in other of our programs. Thank you, Lilia, for helping us today there from your studio. Thanks, Vanessa, <laughs> for, for, for help. Vanessa is a volunteer with Black here in Vancouver who is helping me with, uh, with the links on the chat, letting people win. So that's it for today. Thank you all for coming. Really appreciate it. I'm going to turn off my, my camera, but we are going to leave the event on for just a little longer. So uh, if you want to cl click in one of the, of the links, they will be there just for a couple of minutes more. Thank you all. Thank you for coming. Have a great day. Bye-bye.